overcoming the good thing. It means that we're gaining. And again, um, one more quick word that was spoken to me during the offering is, to me, he said, uh, she wants to see, see you all. Just see her before you leave. That's it. That's it. See Janine before you leave. Overcoming. We are called as believers, as Christ followers, to be overcomers. And uh, um, I am getting, becoming more and more fond of the term Christ followers, as opposed to just Christians. Because the word has become diluted, okay? And um, Just like so many other things, the world has sort of uh, erroneously redefined what it means to be a Christian. And I think that um, it is better said that we are Christ followers. Yeah. I was uh, <coughs> laughing in my, in my thoughts about the, the guy I was talking about. He was... He ran into a girl who was a waitress in a restaurant, and she had this occultic stuff that was all about her. Okay, and uh, and she said uh, she said to him because he was a pastor, "Don't worry, I'm uh, I'm a Christian witch." Okay, she was into witchcraft. He said, "Don't worry," she said, "Don't worry, I'm a Christian witch." He was like, "What? Say what?" <laughs> That's just an example of how um, the world has uh, done crazy things with the word the Christian. Um, there's no such thing as a person who uh, is into witchcraft and, and uh, is a Christian. But anyway, we want to overcome. And let me give you a scriptural perspective on overcoming because we are all called to be overcomers. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 3 John says this is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not burdens. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. There's that word, overcome. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that, over, uh, <clears throat> that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And that idea of believing that Jesus is the Son of God it means to uh, not just believe intellectually, but to believe in and adhere to and trust Jesus. <clears throat> and um, part of believing <coughs> in Jesus is to uh, obey his commands. Remember, in the last chapter of the, uh, the book of Matthew, Jesus gives the great commission of uh, going to all nations and, and, and preach the gospel, teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you, <coughs> and uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But that's my point teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, they're not suggestions. They're commands. 
Verse 5 again. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now I want to point you to the book of Revelation as we take a closer look at this, this idea of being an overcomer. Uh, Re Revelation chapter 7, excuse me, chapter 12. And we'll start at verse 7. And it describes uh, the fall of Satan. Uh, you, all, did you all understand that uh, uh, the devil used to be an angel that was in heaven. He was a beautiful archangel. And he deceived a third of the angels. Uh, and uh, the, the devil, he, Satan, Lucifer, he rebelled and, and deceived a third of the angels to join him in his rebellion. And they were all thrown out. And he, this is the story of that. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. It says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and, and the sea, because the devil has come down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Indeed, the, 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 the enemy knows that his time is short. He knows that Jesus is coming back. He knows that, uh, that he will be thrown into the lake of fire. And he rages against God's people. That's one of the reasons um, you see crazy stuff in the news, like the, like the shooting in, in San Bernardino. That's the enemy raging against the people. Um, God loves people, okay? You understand that? Uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. In other words, all of the human beings on it that he gave his only begotten son. Because God loves people, the devil hates people. Now, it says, look at verse 11. And this is where you and I come in. <clears throat> they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I find these words amazing. This idea of overcoming, what does it mean? Well, if you look it up in the Greek, it means to be victorious. It means to prevail. It means to conquer and subdue. And it says that God's people overcame and they were victorious over and prevailed and conquered and subdued the evil one by, first of all, the blood of the Lamb. And I think uh, that's, an, that's an appropriate topic today is uh, Communion Sunday, where we will focus on the blood of the Lamb.
as we are God's people, this should speak of us and of where our hearts are at and what we're, how we're going through life, that we are called to be these overcomers who overcome the evil one by the blood of the Lamb. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean to overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb? It means to be saved. It means to become a Christ follower. It means to have the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross applied to our lives. Okay, Jesus died as the last ultimate sin sacrifice for all time. That's why he's called the Lamb of God because he was a sin sacrifice and it was the custom to use a lamb, an unblemished lamb. We overcome the enemy first of all by be belonging to Christ. That we are no longer a part of, as the Bible says, the dominion of darkness. Uh, and that we belong to Jesus. How do you belong to Jesus? You, you, it is, you make the decision to make him the Lord of your life. Become a Christ follower. A person who, who, who walks with Jesus every day. Become a Christ follower. A person who lives for Jesus. Now, I know that it is hard to live for him perfectly. But he is the perfect one. We submit ourselves to him and he takes what we submit to him and he makes us holy. Okay, did you get that? You don't have to make yourself holy. Okay, that's a, that's a big... Whew. You don't have to make yourself holy. All you got to do is give him yourself. He will make you holy. And again, we're talking about what does it mean when they said they overcame the evil one by the blood of the Lamb? We sing a song as a hymn, a hymn that uh, says, Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When we come to Jesus, and make him the Lord of our lives. That sacrificial blood is applied to our lives. And that washes away our sins. That even in your imperfections, God sees the blood of Christ on us. And that overcomes the devil. So that when a Christian dies, when a Christ follower dies, the devil has no claim on him. He goes from life to life. Have you been washed in the blood? Do you have the, 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 the reality of this deep down in your soul? Can I, I get the question? Let me state it again. Do you have the reality of this? The idea that you have been washed in the blood, that, that, that Jesus' sacrifice has been applied to your life to cover your imperfections. Do you know that deep down in your knower? Have you submitted your life to him? <coughs> First Peter 1.18 He says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as 
silver or gold that you have been redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Do you know this? And, uh, and I encourage you to know this. The enemy always tries to get people to doubt their salvation. But be saved and know it. This is now they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the blood of the Lamb, first of all, and then secondly, by the word of their testimony. We're talking about how to be an overcomer. And and what we have to overcome is the enemy of our souls. They overcame him by speaking their testimony. What does that mean? Oh, uh, well, uh, they, uh, does that mean that they stood up in church and said, well, I want to give thanks to God uh, for everything he's done for me, uh, give an honor to the pastor, and you know, the, the stuff that folks say when they, when they testify in church. What I think that means is they were wholeheartedly saved and it came out of their mouths. You see, here let me give you a verse out of uh, 1 Peter. We were looking at 1 Peter just a second ago. I'm going to give it to you twice. Once out of the NIV, which is your, your green membership Bible, and secondly out of the Amplified version of the Bible, which tends to ring out the meanings of uh, the words from when you go from, a Hebrew, from, from Greek to English translation. 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. I love the description. I've used it many times a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Okay? We are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation a people belonging to God, that we may declare, that we may speak, that we may make, make the pronouncement about the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Now, I'll give you the same verse in the, in the Amplified. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <coughs> it says they overcame him by the word of their testimony. Have you ever had a test? Have you ever been through something? If you've had a test, you should have a testimony. How God brought you through it. Okay? Have you ever been in a jam and then you got out of it and, and, and had to look back on it and, and say, Phew. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? Yes. And, 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 and thank God about it. Yes. I want you to understand that the speaking of your testimony. I said the speaking of your testimony is part of your overcoming. And the more you proclaim your testimony, the stronger you become in your spirit. Okay, so, so don't be afraid to praise God. Don't be, don't be afraid to say glory be to God 
that God has brought me through this thing. I, I, was, I was going through it, but, but the Lord had mercy on me and brought me out. Okay, see, now, you just didn't get lucky. Okay, God was helping you. Yes. You know, you just, it just wasn't a, 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 a fortunate turn of events. God was busy helping you, big time. See, we belong to him, and, and, and we can claim that as our inheritance. I belong to God, and he's going to take care of me. Okay, now, when the worries come to you, oh my goodness, and you don't know how you're going to make it, you don't know how you're going to pay this bill. Uh, uh, some, some, maybe some legal trouble is trying to come at you. You don't know how, what's going to happen. You say, I belong to God, devil. Yes, amen. And, and I'm going to be okay. Yes. The Lord is going to see me through this thing. Yes. See, <coughs> speaking. Yes. The word of your testimony. Oh, my goodness. What are you going to do? Because... Uh, this thing, and nobody ever got, got past this before. So, well, let me tell you, you, you keep watching and take notes because God is with me. Yes, brag, brag on God. Yes, yes. Brag on God. Brag. Understand that the speaking of your testimonies is part of your only coming. Declare it out loud. I said it again. Declare it out loud who and what you are. Who you are, you are a child of the king. You belong to him. You are saved. That's the what you are. You are saved. You are bought with the blood of Jesus. Take it as your identity. Take that as your reality. And don't be afraid to tell others. This is what Jesus did for me. Well, you sure are lucky. Things come your way all the time. No, no, no. I'm blessed. Yes. God blesses me. Yes. This is what it, this, look at me. This is what it looks like to be blessed. Okay? God blesses me. <coughs> now, I don't have a whole lot of money. Okay? It's between you and I. <laughs> but God blesses us. He takes yes. care of us. And I have everything I need. Yes. And, and, and a whole lot of what I want. Yes. Mm -hmm. God just doesn't give, just take care of my needs. He gives me toys too. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I like toys. You remember when I was a kid at Christmas, you know, what you wanted on the tree was cool toys. Okay. I still want cool toys. And God is good to me. Yes, yes. God is good to me. And I, he's good to me because uh, I, he loves me and I love him back. Yes. He is good to me uh, because I serve him and he calls me son. That's part of my testimony. That he will not abandon me. That he will always be with me. I don't care how crazy things look. Uh, he will always be in my corner and on my side. And I will always serve him till the day I die. And the day I die is the day I open my eyes in, 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 in glory. Which leads us into the next aspect of their overcoming. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And that they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Now, that may sound hardcore. It is. But I think that it is the natural byproduct 
Again, it is the natural byproduct of walking with God and serving Him. If you're saved, if you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, you see, when you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, you, you, you can see yourself changing. Yeah, that's, that's the cool thing about being washed in the blood of the Lamb, being sure enough saved. You can see yourself changing. Things that you are uh, used to enjoy in the world of things that you don't, you don't like that anymore. You see your tastes, your appetites for things changing. You see your, your opinions about things becoming more godly. Why? That's, that's God making you holy. You give him yourself. He takes the self you give him, and he makes it holy, and you watch it happen. Now, as you walk with God, you have more experience with the goodness of God. As you walk with God, you, you watch him provide. You watch him answer prayer after 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 prayer. After prayer. Okay? You, you, you see it happen. And you get to the place that nobody can tell you, well, you believe in that? Okay? Uh, people, people can't tell me that kind of foolishness. Okay, and, and I have some way on. I, I wonder if there is a God. Would you, would you shut up? <laughs> of course there's a God. I walk with him every day. I talked with him this morning, and he talks back to me. Okay, I speak to God, and God speaks to me. And the more real he becomes to me, the more I understand uh, the reality of his word that, that, that talks about these things. Since they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death, they were confident that Their true lives would not end should their hearts stop beating. You see, that's the natural by byproduct. To become confident that when you close your eyes for the last time here, you open them there. When you walk with God, we become confident in that. And that is part of your heritage as, as a Christ follower. <coughs> Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by, not by sight. And we are confident, I say, and would, would prefer to be away from the body and, and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. And we usually read scriptures like this at funerals. Okay, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, so on and so forth. <clears throat> but Paul was confident of this thing, and, and he was clinging to his experience with the Lord. Okay, his faith and his experience. Everybody say faith, faith. and experience. experience. See, the two go together. Once you, when you have faith, God honors your faith and starts to reveal himself. As he reveals himself, you gain experience with him. Paul was, was confident of his relationship with God, 
of his knowledge of God. See, and what I said about how as I have walked with God for decades and watched God answer prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. After pr I can say after prayer like this for the next three hours. After prayer, after prayer, after prayer, after prayer. I can't say after prayer long enough to accurately describe it. And um, God answers prayer sometimes, and, and I think that he must be laughing when he answers it, because he answers it so marvelously. You know what I mean? So beautifully. Um, where with, with, uh, it, it shows that um, he has a, a, a joy. You can see the, the joy of the Lord sometimes, the way he answers prayer so wonderfully. Things you pray for, things that you, people that you pray for, for, for protection, people that you pray for, yes. for God's, uh, God's guidance in their lives. And, um, and then uh, I have prayed this many, many times for folks. Lord, uh, they're screwing up right now, Lord. Now get them and turn them around and get them, Lord. In your love and mercy, go get them and don't let them ruin their lives. Yes. And then... And, and then, then watch him go through it and get a whooping. Mm -hmm. And then turn around. Amen. <laughs> and now, now they want to do what God wants them to do. Yeah. Okay? What God wants them to do in the first place. I pray for them, um, and God has to jack them up a little bit. <laughs> but they're doing okay now. Right. Okay? Okay? And he, he's just being a parent. Being a good parent, how many times uh, that did, did your good parent give you a whooping oh, yeah. when you were messing up? Okay, okay. I I, <laughs> I looked over there and looked at Rick when I said that. He started laughing, and I wasn't wasn't picking on you, brother. Okay, even though you probably got two of a bunch of times. <laughs> I was just playing with it. I'm having this fun. Oh, I'm with you, buddy. Because my mother said, I, I, I can remember those times now. I, I'm going to get you when we get home. Okay, I'm going to get you. You're going to get it. And, and I got it. I've had many butt whoops growing up. And they're probably going to keep me out of prison. All right. Okay. She didn't whoop me because she hated me. She whooped me because I needed it. Well, oh, anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked talking about whoopings. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about the knowledge of the Lord, how you grow to know Him and know what He's about because you've walked with Him. And, 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 and I declare it to you. When you walk with God, he will prove himself. Well, well, how do you know there's a God? Because I know him personally, thank you very much. Okay. Well, how can you know God personally? Well, it starts with having faith. When you have faith in him, then he honors your faith by proving himself, by revealing himself. Okay? And, and then you go, you live with serving the Lord, and you go for decades watching him answer prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. Watching him, listening to him give direction that, that keeps you out of trouble, that saves your life, that guides others. There's no way anybody can tell me there's no such thing as God. They, they just don't know what I know. That's all. That's right. Paul was confident of his relationship with God, his, his knowledge of God, and he was confident, now, don't miss this, of the Word of God. Know what the Word has to say about you. That's why I read you that scripture out of uh, uh, 1 Peter. We are a royal priesthood holy nation. 
a chosen race. Once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Know what the word has to say about you. <clears throat> um, you've all heard the story about how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Okay. Jesus went to uh, their little village. Lazarus has died, he's gotten word. Jesus is talking to Martha, one of Lazarus' sisters. Now Lazarus is dead and, and in, the, in the tomb. And he says to her, Jesus said to her, your brother will, will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection in the last day. And then Jesus makes a, an incredible statement. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now either he was crazy or he was awfully tough. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? He asks for the question. Okay, and, and the idea again, they overcame him by the, uh, the blood of the lamb, the word of the testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. This is one of the things I want you to cling to as we talk about understanding the word of God and what the word has to say. What Jesus said about himself, okay, that he is the resurrection and the life. Verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Okay, this, is, this is why we are not to be afraid of death. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. This is why we are not to be afraid of death. Because we live and we're believing in him and, and we, we will close our eyes one day in death, but, but that's not the end of us at all. We just transition uh, from, from this life to, to greater and fuller life. And I believe that. He asked her, he asked her, do you believe this? I say, yes, Lord, I believe that. The people who Love, didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. They believed it too. The people right now in the Middle East who ISIS is cutting off their heads. Okay, those Egyptian Christians. ISIS, there was 20 of them uh, a few months ago, back in the summer. They cut their heads off and made a video of it. Islam has been spreading by the edge of the sword for centuries. But does that mean? That means they say you renounce whatever it is you believe in and uh, uh, accept Allah, make the Muslim confession, or we'll kill you. Okay, if you're a Christ follower, do you throw Christ away and uh, to save your life? You make the Muslim confession. The Muslim confession says uh, uh, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Okay, will you make the Muslim, Muslim confession? Or die? They, they, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. This is not some far out stuff. This stuff is happening in our world today where 
people are being, the, the demand, the demand is being put on them. <clears throat> Renounce Jesus or we'll kill you. And they choose death. They did, not, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. You know, if you're not afraid to die, you are free to be bold for Christ. The, the police will tell you, some guy who's not afraid to die is dangerous. <laughs> okay? Uh, he don't care about dying? Oh, Lord, watch out. Okay. Uh, the bad guy, he, he, he's armed, he, and he don't care about dying? Brace yourself. Okay? Um, you can be that guy, that gal, who's not afraid to die. And the devil says, they're not afraid to die? Oh, Lord. Does the devil say, oh, Lord? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, one for deeper, think deep, deeper thinkers than I. How does the devil see you? As a pushover or as that dangerous one who is all in? Be an overcomer. Be an overcomer. Be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Have a testimony that you that you don't mind giving. Uh, and, and the enemy knows this stuff, and I'm trying to tell you now. That's why he wants you to stay quiet all the time. Don't be out there talking all that Jesus stuff. Okay? That 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 attitude that the world has towards Christians. People don't want to hear that. <coughs> well, I'd like to thank the Lord for how he's taking care of Oh my goodness, it's a fanatic. <laughs> okay? The enemy tries to step on your testimony. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Okay, and uh, you just avoid having your testimony squashed. Okay? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony, that they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Here's my last slide. When it comes to salvation, do you have it? Have you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Okay, okay, now, and you cannot have him as your Savior if you won't have him as your Lord. Lord means boss. Okay? So understand what I'm asking. Have you submitted your life to him? Your testimony about him. <clears throat> when you speak it, don't be intimidated by the world around you by the culture that is becoming more and more godless every day, if you haven't noticed. You feel free to be the odd one. Okay? The odd one. Oh, Lord, you're talking about Jesus. Yep. Yes. Yes, I am. Don't be talking that stuff around here. So I've been thrown out of better places than this. Yeah. I don't care. Yes, See, have the, have the mentality that says, I'm all in. Okay. And uh, if I get killed because of this, then so be it. That's his business. I belong, to, I belong to him. If he wants to kill me, that's his business. I belong to him. I belong to him. I belong. And he is the source of your eternal life. Walk like it. 
Live like it. Your hope is in Jesus. Your hope is not in your money. And I, but uh, may the Lord bless you with money. Your hope is not in your health. And you should know that it, uh, every time you get a bad cold and knock down for a week, you got the flu. Your hope is in Jesus. It's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. Our hope is in a person. Live like it. Walk like it. If you're saved, you have eternal life right now. You understand that? Eternal life is not what you hope to have one day. If you're saved, eternal life is what you have right now. This is the part of eternity. And uh, I'm walking in it right now. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness. <coughs> Lord, uh, I thank you for the provision that helps us to be overcomers. Lord, if there are any here who have not made you the Lord of their lives, the boss of their lives, there are any here who have not submitted their lives to you, Lord. Uh, as their hearts call out to you, Lord, to save them now, forgive them for their sins. Wash them in the blood of, blood of Jesus. Lord, uh, uh, Wash them in the blood of Jesus. Teach them to live for you. Lord, um, and help us to speak our testimony. Help us to, to, to speak out loud and fearlessly the, the word of our testimony. Lord, and uh, help us to walk in the natural by, byproduct of, of walking with you. That we are not afraid to die for you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done. Be blessed forever. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And with this, let's go in.